about to overload my aggression inhibitors. Well, the quest to figure out what the F is going on with this computer, I have done something that I said I wasn't going to do. Because I needed to find out, so that everybody knows, the compatibility of this LGA 771 processor mod. Well, as it turns out, I decided to go ahead and put the Core 2 Duo back in the computer that originally was installed on this motherboard when I got it. And wouldn't you know, I have absolutely no problems running Mountain Lion on this motherboard anymore. All the graphics problems, all the spinning wheel problems have all disappeared. So now, I have a new problem. Why that is. All the problems that I was having have disappeared by swapping that processor. This little hobbled together mess and light show here is the setup that I did, just temporarily. Kind of cool, that's a Intel heatsink, but got a nice little blue LED. Um, anyway, this is where my finding out what was going on led me. This is that motherboard that I originally used to test this E5430 processor to see if it would work at all. And as you can see, I have a GeForce 9800 GT in this right now. I have the E5450 in this right now. And I'll just go up here and show you that. As you can see, the windows are opening up perfectly. 3 gigahertz, 12 megabyte cache, all that fun stuff. I'm having absolutely no problems with this whatsoever. Now, I did install the NVIDIA drivers. I had to do a complete reinstall on this, which is fine. I don't mind that. Um, and I chose the uh, Intel, or the, uh, disabled the Intel drivers, and then I did the uh, NVIDIA old drivers, and then the 1082 drivers as well, uh, together there. And uh, it seems like it's quite happy, so... Well, as you can see, we're in my bathroom right now, and I've decided to go ahead and... Before I go ahead and put the um, E5450 back into this motherboard, and I had this motherboard out of the computer for about ten times now since I've owned it, I'm going to go ahead and hit all the memory slots, the processor slot, and all the PCI Express slots, and the PCI, and the S, and the... Um, say and and all these all these connectors right here especially the processor and the memory with some deoxid and just freshen up these pins a little bit just in case anything that's causing me a problem has anything to do with a little bit of oxidation build up on these pins over the years i'm just going to go ahead and clean these up while i've got this thing and i'm going to go ahead and hit it with this stuff here just as a final kind of wash it down. Now this stuff is not conductive in any way. Just in case anything gets in there and over the years. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and let this dry a little bit. This stuff dries very fast so it'll be just a couple minutes here. I'll go ahead and reassemble it into the case and boot it back up. After all that work, I finally came up with the answer. I don't like the answer, but for now, it's the way it is. So as you can see, Big Blue is put back together here. And he has his LJ 771 Xeon E54 50 processor clocking this thing at 4.25 gigahertz 500 megahertz bus 1666 megabyte clock speed on the memory <clears throat> and it's running absolutely perfectly fine it is not however running mountain line why you may ask well let me tell you After I put the hobble together 
mess of computer components back together there and tested it. As I said, I found out that it worked just fine with Mountain Lion on that LGA 775 G31 based motherboard. Well, as it turns out, both processes work just fine. I had absolutely no problems installing or running Mountain Lion with that combination. So I went back and I already tested this with the Core 2 Duo and found that it worked perfectly fine with Mountain Lion and the Core 2 Duo. It did not, however, like the LGA 771, either the 5430 or the 5450 flavors of the LGA processor. So, I went ahead and did a uh, microcode update to the BIOS for the new uh, LGA 771 processor, which enabled SSC4 and VXT, or no, excuse me, VTX, sorry. There's so many names to remember. Anyway, I really thought that that was the problem. That Mountain Lion, because it had an LGA 771 processor, was looking for something to be enabled on the processor that it wasn't seeing. And that's what caused it to go all cattywampus and lose its wits and gain a little bit of Alzheimer's there. Well, as it turns out, that didn't help one iota either. So, I have no idea why. The mod to do the LGA 771 to 775 motherboard is not entirely dead. Um, I'm not too unhappy with where I'm at, although I had to run Windows, but there is a benefit to that. Um, this particular camera, uh, the, the file format that it records in Windows recognizes natively. Uh, Mountain Lion does not. Mountain Lion, um, I have to recompress it with Handbrake before I can edit it. Although, um, QuickTime will read the format just fine, but Final Cut Pro has absolutely no idea what to do with the file. So, that will save me one step. Plus the sound, the onboard sound, even though I have a much better sound card to put back into this computer, the onboard sound actually sounds a whole heck of a lot better now with Windows 8 than it did on Mountain Lion. I have the Mountain Lion hard drive in there right now, and I'm not entirely done with this because... Um, now that I've done the microcode update, even though the system or the, the Macintosh Type 3 1 uh, was giving me problems, I'm going to probably try the 5 1 again. Before it was just black screening. And um, since I did this mod, maybe that will uh, fix that problem. So I'm hoping that maybe it's just the Mac model for some odd reason. Because this is a DDR3 motherboard, and the other one is a DDR2 motherboard. So. Maybe there's something there. I really don't know. But for now, I'm quite happy. A 1.25 gigahertz clock over the default clock is definitely not something to sneeze at. Um, that's a very healthy overclock. And I've had some problems getting it stable at that speed, I will admit. But uh, I think I've finally gotten all the kinks worked out of it. And I think I finally got all of its wits put back into its little cookie jar there, so... Anyway, that's where I'm at right now on this thing, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some benchmarking there and stuff like that that I know you guys have been wanting to see, so let's get started on that. Some quick benchmarks here at 4250. Because of the 500 megahertz bus, I've actually gained a couple gigabytes a second in memory speed, although that's probably not going to really mean anything in performance on this processor, but... It's kind of interesting to see that the bus speed was in fact a limitation of the megabytes per second. I'm kind of curious as to how high that would actually go if I could get the bus speed a bit higher on this gigabyte board, but I'm not going to push it. I've got it running quite quite high right now anyway, so let's do the memory latency test here. sixty nine point one this number fluctuates between sixty eight point something and sixty nine so that's probably just something running in windows that I can't really stop do a CPU test and you see we're still pretty close to where we were there now we'll do a floating point test real quick here
Not too terrible. Now I'll show you guys something real quick here. I've been kind of wondering. Oops, that's not what I want. I've been kind of wondering if these benchmarks actually stress all four cores or if they do just one. Well, as it turns out, they do both. I'll show you here. CPU utilization monitor in Windows here. 25% is one core, 100% is all four cores, if you, if you don't know. So I'll do the CPU benchmark here again and watch that right there. As you can see, it barely went up to scale, about 25% of the scale, which means it went up only with one core. So each one of these benchmarks is based on a single core. That's something to be uh, interested in. Uh, and the other thing, let's look at the fault point. Now, watch this. It actually stresses all of them. And there you go. Memory test. Uh, let's see, let's try this one. Read speed. I believe this tests only one core as well. No, it tests all of them. And see my memory speed changed a little bit there, probably because this is running. And let's do a latency test real quick here. And the latency test only does one core. That's what it was. And there's our number again. Like I said, it, that thing jumps around a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, load up uh, 3D Mark 11 here for the umpteenth time that I've tried to run this. But now that I think I've got this thing actually happy, I think I've been able to get all its wits put back together into the cookie jar here. I'll go ahead and do a benchmark, get this started, and we'll be back when it finishes. Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> Manufacturing process, zero nanometer. That's really funny. This is actually running, I think, 833, I think. But, you know, my video card is holding me back, and frankly, a high-end i7 is going to be a lot higher score than this. But, uh, you know, for what it's worth, I'm not complaining. You know, I've got uh, probably right at, even right now, right at a giga, uh, gigahertz faster than what I was uh, overclocking the x3222 I was doing a 3.2 on that one on air although I was running at 3.6 when it was in my gaming system which is water cooled but uh, um, I'm not complaining you know it's uh, 12 mega cache and uh, a gigahertz faster and DDR3 memory and I should see some kind of an improvement you would think um, this motherboard, I think, is really holding it back because I don't think this motherboard is designed to be able to cope with that kind of uh, current draw that the processor puts on the voltage regulators up there. That's what I'm seeing anyway. That essentially, once they get to a certain temperature, the whole system just loses its wits and goes crashing right into the ground. And haven't let out the magic smoke yet. Thankfully, the genie hasn't gotten blown out of his lamp on this, but... Um, you know, this is the this is the kind of challenges that you have when you're doing extreme overclocking. Unfortunately, just because somebody else got 1.44 or 1.46 or 1.6 gigahertz or whatever they got out of theirs doesn't mean that you're going to get it either. But I'm happy. A 1250 megahertz overclock o over the default speed. I'm not complaining. 
Back in the day, I was happy to get 50 or 100 megahertz overclock back in the Celeron 300 era. I've got it tweaked so it's happy right now, so we'll see how long we can keep the old genie happy in the magic lamp here. So we just keep rubbing his belly and tickling his feet once in a while, and I think we'll keep him going there. So until next time, thanks for liking, watching, subscribing, and sharing all of my videos. Normally I don't do postscripts at the end of my videos, but I figured I'd do one on this one because things are changing so rapidly here when I'm fo uh, filming these videos that uh, I feel like I need to add this to the end of this video. Um, as you can see, I've got these two processors side by side, and I'm doing a... I'm in a little bit of a conversation right now with a gentleman on uh, Overclocker.net that may solve the X38 conundrum with these socket 771s. I'm going to see if I can actually perform this mod or not. This guy's uh, theory is basically that the signals that would normally be coming out of the processor, the LGA 771, which is this guy right here, these pins right here, a couple of these are responsible for the VSS signal and his theory is, is that the chipset on the motherboard is actually looking for those signals to be present for the uh, X38 and X48 chipsets in order to be able to turn on and post to the BIOS. His theory is, is that because the, the chipset supports ECC memory, it's looking for a condition essentially that it's not seeing because those that v, VSS signal is missing from the LGA 771 chip because if you notice those pins are not there. There might be a huge mod in a future video. It'll be quite impressive to be sure. But um, right now it's just kind of a theory we're kind of working on right now. So I'll keep you posted if anything develops on that. So that'll wrap this video up for now.